Hi everyone, this is Matt to Show with Intro Stats, and today we're going to look at using um, Statcato and StatKey to calculate p-values. So kind of get this idea of using software to calculate p-values, um, and then uh, and see how that works. So um, when you're doing a hypothesis test, I got three examples we're going to look at today. The uh, first example is this body temperature data. It's a sample of 50 adults and they they're, took their temperature and we see their temperature here. And I'm going to test, I wanted to test the, um, the claim that um, the sample, um, the mean average normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees or is it less than 98.6 degrees? So. Um, my null hypothesis will be that uh, the normal body temperature mu is 98.6 and my alternative will be that mu is less than 98.6. Okay, so when you're doing a hypothesis test, this was a mean average hypothesis test, so I would just go to statistics, hypothesis test, one population mean. It's pretty, pretty nice menus in StatCato, really easy to find things. Um, do I have summarized data? Now your summarized data would be the sample size, the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. If those things you already knew or they were given to you, you could type those in. But this is actually raw data, so I'm just going to click samples in column and type C1, body temperature. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a 5% significance level. Now, um, right here it says hypothesized mean. Again, that's the number in the null hypothesis that we're checking, so 98.6. And again, I want to do a less than test. A less than, remember, would mean that the computer's going to do a left tail test. They're going to use the left tail when they calculate the p-value. Again, uh, Staccato is a theoretical, is more traditional. Um, so it's going to use the traditional test statistic method. So it's going to calculate the test statistic and then it's going to find the percentage in the left tail corresponding to the test statistic for the T distribution. So let's just push OK and see what happens. So there's our null and alternative hypothesis. Mu equals 98.6 and mu is less than 98.6. Um, we see the printout, right? We have our test statistic, negative 3.141. Our critical value is negative 1.677, and here's our p-value, 0.0014, and again, we compare that to our significance level. We can see that the p-value is actually lower than the significance level. We also see that the test statistic falls in the tail determined by the critical value. So um, those always go together. Now, where did, where did the computer get these numbers, right? A lot of computer programs are just going to kind of spit out a bunch of numbers to you. Let's take a look at stat, uh, stat key. We're going to go to stat key and calculate these same numbers. Um, the one thing I do want is this test statistic, negative 3.141, negative 3.141. And my degrees of freedom for this one would be... Um, would be uh, n minus 1 or uh, 49. So we're going to have a 49 degrees of freedom here. So they're going to use a T curve with the degrees of freedom 49. So if I go to stack, stack key and I go to theoretical distributions T, right? Here it is right here, T. I'm going to type in my degrees of freedom 49. There it is. Now I'm going to click left tail. Now since this is a 5% significance level, I could, if I type 0 0.05 in the probability for the, ta the left tail, I should get the critical value. Yeah, and notice negative 1.677 is where the tail starts. That's the critical value that StatCato gave us. So this is a picture of what StatCato was doing. Now remember, to get the p-value, we want the probability that associated with the test statistic, so that negative 3.141. So again, I'm going to type that in this bottom box in the left tail. So negative 3.141. Let me just make sure. Yeah, negative 3.141 and push OK. 
And there's our p-value. See that? The probability right above the test statistic, 0 0.0014. So this would be the, the traditional theoretical p-value based on the test statistic. So this is sort of what the picture of what Stat Cato was giving us. Now remember, we can also calculate this p-value or a p-value with randomized simulation. So let me show you how that calculation would go, because that's the more modern day approach. So if I go to randomized hypothesis test, test for single mean, there it is, and there's the body temperature data. It's the first one up. It says body temperature. Here's the day, the actual sample data. I can see my sample mean was 98.26. Now remember, uh, the null hypothesis was mu equals 98.6. They have already put that in for us. Now again, in randomized simulation, you're going to ask the computer to create random samples with the same sample size as the original sample. Okay, so it's going to create thousands of random samples under the premise that body, normal body temperature really is 98.6. So think of it this way, the computer's assuming the null hypothesis is true, they're assuming it's 98.6, what kinds of random samples would I be likely to see? And they're going to actually put these random samples all of these um, sample means from these random samples on the same graph. They're going to create a sampling distribution of sample means based on the premise that the null is true. So again, just like any sampling distribution, just click the thousand samples, generate a thousand samples a few times. There we go, creating a nice and this is a picture of what sampling variability looks like. Now this we were doing a left tail test, so click left tail Okay. Now this is not going to be based on the test statistic. This is going to be based on the sample mean itself. So if I was kind of doing this problem, um, uh, if you want to see sort of a, where does the tail begin in terms of, not in terms of critical value, but in terms of the sample means, you can put in the 0 0.05 in the tail, just like we did for critical values. But this down here now is the sample mean. So the computer thinks that any sample mean below 98.427 would be considered um, uh, significant. This is kind of where the tail starts. Now remember, in randomized simulation, the, my random samples are not the same as yours. So my numbers may be slightly different from when you do. Everybody that does a simulation gets something slightly different. That's because of sampling variability. Now this is not the p-value though, this is the significance level. The p-value is the probability of getting this original sample mean right here. Remember the definition of p-value, if the null is true, the probability of getting the sample data or sample statistic or more extreme by sampling variability. So put, put the original sample mean, 98.26, in this bottom box right here. 98.26. So it's kind of the same idea as what you were doing with the test statistic, but now you're going to kind of the directly the sample statistic itself instead of having to um, use the test statistic. So here it is, and there's our estimated p-value. I got a 0 .00025. Again, a little bit different than what the um, test statistic uh, and the t-curve theoretically would give us, but it is pretty close. We're still really, really close to zeros. We're still getting a very, very small p-value. So this would be our estimated p-value if I was doing randomized simulation. Notice again, they didn't look for just simu uh, simulated samples that were exactly 98.26, but also anything in the tail to the left of that 98.26. Alright, let's look at another example here. So let's do a proportion one. Here's a question we asked our stat students. Uh, do you typically eat breakfast, yes or no? Well, I kind of just wanted to see what the count was for that, so I'm just going to make a quick pie chart here. And again, under data values from worksheet, I'm going to type in C3, push OK. And it looks like they had 135 students uh, said no, they do not eat breakfast, and 194 students uh, roughly about 59% of the sample um, did eat breakfast. So my question is, I want to test whether 50% um, whether of STAT students eat breakfast. That's my question. 
do 50% of stat students eat breakfast? So it's going to be, uh, my null hypothesis is that my population percentage is equal to 50%, and my no alternative hypothesis will be that the population percentage is not equal to 50%. So I'm going to do a two-tailed test here. So in stat Cato, you would just go statistics, hypothesis test, one population proportion. Again, I could put the raw data in, but usually with categorical data, you have the um, you have the uh, just the counts. Um, let's take a look again. They they said it was 194, right? 194. Now they didn't give me the total. Let's see, 194 plus 135 was 329. So 194 out of 329 would be my count. So 194 was the number of events, that's like the number of successes, and 329 was my total. Again, I'm gonna, the, the population proportion in the null hypothesis is 0.5, and I'm going to leave it as not equal because I want to do, a, again, a um, two-tailed test. Again, you can change the significance level to whatever significance level you want. I'm going to leave it at 0 0.05 since that's the usual one. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, so here's my 0 0.5 and, and um, not equal to 0 0.5. It's a two-tailed test. Notice I have two critical values, plus or minus 1.96. Those are my z-score critical values. Those are the real famous ones. Uh, we saw those in, in uh, confidence intervals. Here's my z-score test statistic, 3.25. That is falling in the tail. Also notice my p-value, 0 0.0011, is definitely lower than my significance level. Okay, but how, again, how do we get these numbers, right? Well, again, I can go and, and actually, this would just be the percentage in the two tails that's corresponding to the test statistic, 3.253. So again, if I go back to stat key, I can actually calculate it with the theoretical curve. Now if you remember z-scores for proportions are under the normal button. So you click theoretical distributions normal. You want to leave the mean set at 0 and the standard deviation set at 1. That, that, leaves it, that makes it a z-score. Again this was a two-tailed test and 5% significance level broken up into two tails would be 2.5% in each tail. So this is correct. So there is my critical values that stat, key, uh, stat Cato gave us, right? Plus or minus 1.96. But this is not the p-value, right? The p-value is the probability associated with the test statistic. So the probability of getting that test statistic or more extreme by sampling variability if the null was...